Hello, I'm Robin, and welcome to Bookspin. So, we are into September now, and for this month I've decided to do a project which I'm calling Short Sci-Fi September. So the focus for me for this month is going to be science fiction short stories, and that's all I'm going to be reading this month. So I really enjoy reading short stories, but I don't think I've read enough of them. I really want to read more short fiction within the genre, and I think this is a good opportunity for me to do this. There's a lot of great short fiction out there. And I think short stories, just in general, could do with a bit more love on Booktube. So I've set this project for myself. I'm planning to read and review some short story collections. And I'm also going to be releasing some uh, videos throughout the month focused on this theme. But what I'd like to focus on uh, today in this video is my TBR. Which authors should I be reading this month as part of this project? So I've decided to aim for four short story collections. This year I've been averaging about a book a week, more or less. So I think four books should be a reasonable goal. So what I've been doing is I've been looking through all of my short story collections that I have available. And this is how I've decided to do it. I'm going to have one classic book, one modern book, one random pick, and one book that will be decided on by a vote. So just to clarify, these are all books within my collection and they're all short story collections. I'm not including anthologies. I'd rather focus on individual authors for the purposes of this uh, project. I'm also not including fix-up novels, which incorporate short stories, but they, they kind of, they stitch them together and present them as a novel. That was quite a popular thing back in the day. A lot of publishers used to do that. But I'm just gonna be focusing on short story collections. And that's how I'm gonna do it. Let's see what I'll be reading for each category. So first up, there's the classic collection. And this actually applies to the vast majority of all of the short story collections I have. Now, how do we define classic science fiction? It is, of course, entirely arbitrary. But for my own purposes, I'm going to say anything that was written before I was born. And for this one, I've chosen this book, Howard Who by Howard Waldrop. This one was actually published first in 1986, which was just before I was born. So it only just makes it into this list, according to my rules anyway. But it is one that I really want to read. I recently read Howard Waldrop for the first time with his time travel novel, Them Bones, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and I want to read more of his work. And I've heard that it's his short stories where his talent really shines. So this is Howard Who. Interesting cover, as you can see. Um, George R. R. Martin says, if this is your first taste of Howard, I envy you. So let's have a quick look at the blurb, shall we? What if the dodo wasn't extinct after all? What if sumo wrestlers could defeat their opponents with the power of the mind? What if Isaac Walton and John Bunyan went fishing for Leviathan in the Slough of Despond? Acclaimed cult author Howard Wardrop's stories are sophisticated, magical recombinations of the stuff that our pop culture dreams are made of. Open this book and encounter jazz singers, robotic cartoon ducks, Nosferatu, angry gorillas, and of course, the dodo. An, icon an iconoclast 
Waldrop lives in Austin, Texas. He won the Nebula and World Fantasy Awards for the Ugly Chickens included here. So, that looks really interesting. I can't wait to get started on this one. Next up for my modern pick, I'm going for another author that I've recently discovered, and that is S.B. Divya. I read her two Alloy era novels over the summer. I really enjoyed those. And I recently interviewed her on the channel. And from what I've heard, her short fiction has some really compelling ideas. So I've decided to read her 2019 collection. Here it is, Contingency Plans for the Apocalypse and Other Possible Situations. So let's have a look at the blurb. A sickly biologist shuts herself off from the world and its deadly pollutants to research her beloved microbiota in peace until a chance encounter drives her to venture out into an unlivable Bangalore. In a dystopian Arizona, a couple performs forbidden life-saving abortions amid the threat of tanks and drones, the strict report of automatic weapons and the spying eyes of neighbours. A young woman competes in a gruelling challenge, determined to win a place in a world where body modifications equal class and grant people the privilege of transcending gender. In this collection of 14 layered stories featuring dying cities, undying humans, amorphous bodies, cyborg races and magic beetles, internationally acclaimed writer and data scientist S.P. Divya treads the line between the present and the future while exploring the eternal conundrums of identity and love in speculative worlds. And Kindleo says, I wish more science fiction were as exciting and relevant. So that looks pretty interesting. Now the third book is going to be a random pick. So the way I'm going to do this is I've put all of my remaining short story collections in my library, the, the ones which I haven't read yet. I've put them into a list uh, and I put them into a random picker program. It's a variation of the book spinner, which I've used before. And I'm going to pick one that way. Let's take a look. And here's the list. 22 titles. Let's see what I'm going to get. <laughs> The Time Migration. Okay, this is interesting. This is a book which I picked up recently while I was out in China. I was visiting a bookshop over there and I was browsing the sci-fi section. This was pretty much the only English language book that I could find. The Time Migration. It's a collection of short stories by Liu Sishin and here it is. Uh, unfortunately, there's no blurb on the cover. There are seven stories in here. And I think they're all translated by different people. So that'll be interesting. I have read one of them before, Taking Care of God. I, I read that in an anthology. Um, and I also have the original Chinese text because these two books came together as a package and there is a blurb on here but it's in Chinese so if anyone is watching us who can read Chinese you can pause that and have a look so looking forward to reading this one and finally the last book this is one that you can help me out with I've taken four more collections that I'm very keen to read from my library and I'm putting up a poll on my channel so you can vote on which one you think I should read. You can find the poll in the community tab page of my channel so feel free to vote if you want to. Anyway these are the books which I'm considering 
Starting off with Philip Jose Farmer, Strange Relations. And this one has got a really wacky cover. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I do love a bit of Philip Jose Farmer. Let's take a quick look at the blurb on the back. Future Shock. Philip Jose Farmer is one of the handful of authors who made science fiction grow up. Unlike so many other SF writers, he has never been afraid to explore to the furthest limits of the bizarre, terrifying and grotesque the implications of man's contact with completely alien life forms in outer space. In this outstanding collection of brilliantly disturbing stories, man meets alien in a weird variety of ways. The results of these encounters will shock, startle and astound you. They will also open your mind to a new awareness of the range of experience available to man in an infinite universe. Okay, that looks interesting. So the next option that I'm thinking about is Nine Tomorrows by Isaac Asimov. Uh, now the edition I have doesn't have a cover. This is just a plain hardback. So unfortunately there's no cover art and there's no blurb to read. But this is a classic and it includes a couple of his most famous stories, including The Last Question, which is one of the most famous short stories of all time, I think. And Asimov himself once described this story as his own personal favourite of his, of his own short stories. So this is probably definitely worth a read. And my third option is uh, Jizzle by John Wyndham. Now, I haven't read Wyndham for quite a long time, um, so I'm, I'm quite tempted by this one. I've never read any of his short stories before, and I do love the, the cover art on this one. So let's take a, a quick look at the back cover. It says, Take a dip into a world where reality trembles and sanity is all in the mind. A world created by the brilliant author of Day of the Triffids and The Kraken Wakes. There's a monkey with a unique artistic talent. A man living his life over again. The tube in the rush hour that was so crowded it seemed like hell. In fact, it was hell. Sit back and enjoy these fragments from beyond the edge of reason. And keep looking behind you. Looks very interesting. So yeah, I'd definitely be up for giving that a try. And the final option, which I'm considering, is this book by Roger Zelazny. It's called The Doors of His Face, The Lamps of His Mouth, and Other Stories. So it's a bit of a mouthful, that title. But I have read a couple of Zelazny novels before, which I really enjoyed. Um, Lord of Light and This Immortal. So I have quite high hopes for this one. And this collection includes his critically acclaimed story, A Rose for Ecclesiastes. Uh, so let, let's have a... Uh, Quick look at the blurb. It does have a blurb here. A collection of 15 stories of man in the future, living on new worlds, building new mechanical servants, designing new forms for his own body. They range in time from a few decades to a few millennia into the future, in setting from the solar system to deepest space. The prize-winning title story is the highly imaginative and very believable tale of a fishing expedition for an enormous sea monster under the oceans of the planet Venus. The rest of the collection maintains the high standard thus set, with tales of a rebellious preacher's son finding a di different religion on Mars, of an expedition to an electrically haunted mountain where a girl is discovered in hibernation state, awaiting the discovery of a cure for her fatal disease, of a man's penchant for aggrandizement, all display the style, wit 
and imagination which have made Roger Zelazny one of the most highly praised science fiction writers of today. So, another great choice, I think. I would be happy to read any of those. Uh, so, yeah, those are my, my four choices. Whichever one gets the most votes, I'll add to my TBR for later in the month. So that's it. I can't wait to get started. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more science fiction content.